Shalom, this is Rabbi Yehuda coming at you, known in Igbo land as Tochokwu, also known by my title, Odum Biara Ani Igbo Nawani Diuto. To all my viewers, I say Shalom, and specifically to my Igbo viewers, I say Kedu. Uh, whenever you see me wear this hat or my red belt chieftain cap, you can pretty much guarantee I'm going to be dealing with a subject regarding the Igbo people of my Nigeria. And so today, I specifically want to tackle the thorny subject of the danger of Afrocentricity among the Igbo. So let's get started. Now, before the white man, the explorers, the slave traders, and the missionaries came to West African shores and met the Ibu people, the Ibu have never questioned uh, their origins, their heritage, or their identity. Now, the former slave, Oluda Ekwano, in his biography, expounded on this fact as he gives detailed account of Ibu culture prior to the coming of the white man and how it relates to that of the children of Israel. Now, the explorers and slave traders, even in their limited knowledge of scripture, could clearly see by their initial contact with the Ibu that the Ibu mirrored the life of, of the children of Israel in the wilderness. And it was certainly clear to the Anglican missionary G.T. Basden and his ministerial associates that the Ibus were likely a lost tribe of Israel, and it was best to keep this knowledge under their hat so it would be uh, easier to convert the Ibu and assimilate them into Christianity. They felt that if they confirmed the Hebraic identity to the Ibu people, that they would lose them entirely to Judaism. And so came the introduction of the forbidden uh, foods, uh, unkosher foods, and came uh, the introduction of this new concept that Chukwabiyama was actually a pagan god and that their ancestors were, were deified pagan gods. And slowly uh, came the process of turning the Ibu away from their Hebraic culture to a more westernized Christian one. Now, in many, in many volumes produced by Ibu Hebrew scholars and other researchers, researchers in uh, such works as, you know, the ones that I've wrote, Finding Gad, The Quest for the Lost Tribe of Gad, Omenana, As in Israel, So in Ibu Land, are Ibu's Hebrew, and by other authors like Caliban Michael, Our Roots, Ibu Hebrew Heritage, and Professor Aleeze, uh, Ibu Exodus, and Remy Alona, who wrote uh, the Ibus, Jews in Africa, and the Ibu in Israel, among other books and other scholars, it's been well established uh, the various evidences such as the biblical, historical, archaeological, cultural, scientific, and linguistic evidences connecting the Ibu tribe of Nigeria to that of Gad, as well as other tribes of Israel such as Judah, Levi, Zebulun, just to name a few. However, in recent years, there has come pseudo-scholars, even among the black Afrocentric community, desiring to do no less than what the white explorers and slave traders and missionaries had done, to deny and to hide the true identity of the Ibu people and to bring them back under the paganism that caused them to be expelled from the land by the white men in the first place. This, according to Deuteronomy chapter 28, which talks about uh, one of the main things when you disobey God and his word and his commandments, that you will be expelled from the land, that you will be uh, sold into slavery, etc. Now, ironically, under the guise uh, of enlightenment through educational institutions, which have been built from the foundation of colonialism, which these uh, pseudo-scholars, black uh, um, Afrocentric scholars cry out so much against, they themselves uh, ha ha have been teaching uh, and caused people to buy into the racial prejudices and falsehoods that all Jews are white and have a colonial mindset and agenda to mentally and spiritually subjugate the, the Ibu people. Now, Afrocentric pseudo-scholars attempts to further expand the abyss of the racial divide between whites and blacks, as well as bring Ibus and other African peoples spiritually and mentally back under the dark ages of paganism and some sort of imaginary, diluted, repackaged, postmodern, neo-pagan, Afrocentric golden age that never existed nor ever will exist. Afrocentricity also endangers not only the Ibu, but all unique African tribes and peoples, which in reality, their uniqueness and diversity is a beautiful thing and a strength, but it is seen uh, as a wedge uh, of division among the Afrocentric uh, pseudo-scholars. Now, ironically, this comes from a colonial Western mindset. Now, the African mindset was to live and let live, to, to you know, accept the, uh, all the African tribes and all their beauty and all their new uniqueness and to just simply agree on the things that you can agree with and to disagree agreeably in brotherly love and unity on the things that you don't agree with and not worry about that. 
And so, in other words, they were unified by their diversity rather than separated. And it was the colonial mindset that, okay, let's all have a cookie-cutter uh, nation, and let's just all be Africans. Let's forget about being Bantu or Limbo or Ibu or, or uh, um, Lobi or whatever. Uh, they wanted to be uh, Afrocentric, and therefore uh, these, these unique tribes would lose their cultural identity. So Afrocentricity uh, uh, not only endangers the Ibu culture, but all African tribal cultures at large. Uh, so um, hopefully this uh, introduction to, to this matter and the subjects will kind of really help you see uh, the importance of the Ibu language and the Ibu culture, and that it is rooted in, um, in um, the Hebraic culture. So thank you for watching. Shalom and Shavuot Tov.